Hi! Welcome to another episode of Frank's TV. Um, today I'm going to talk about consciousness. Um, I want to share a little bit about my thoughts about the revolution of higher consciousness and I want to give some of my tools away and some of my thought processes away that will help and hopefully allow other people to break through those barriers that keep you away from higher consciousness. Um, woo, I burped. Stick around. Um, a lot of fun today. I know very, I'm trying to like get into those topics a lot deeper. So we'll see how this goes. Um, thank you so much for tuning in and stick around. to understand Cause she's Sophie from the man Cause that girl does what no one can That's Frank She's the type of girl that you love to detest But when the woman's feelings you choose to repress She's so beautiful I don't know how to address Let's call her Hello world. Hello world. Um, welcome to another episode of Frank's TV. Let's go ahead and get started because I have something that I think is important to discuss and I want to make sure I give myself enough time. So the other day I was uh, combing through Amazon Prime and I wanted to re-watch some of the things that I had seen earlier in quarantine. Um, especially because when I had seen them, I was smoking a lot of weed and I wasn't in the most like clear state of mind. I wasn't necessarily absorbing things the way that my now conscious sober brain, um, uh, absorbs them. So I wanted to give myself another go around and like, you know, just kind of see things differently, um, or see how I saw them in the first place. So the other day I sat down and rewatched uh, Dr. Stephen Greer. Um, he's like the alien guy. I rewatched the Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. And it brought something up to me that I think was, would be really cool to bring to you guys, which was actually the art and science of consciousness. Um, I know I, on the Frank's World's bio, it says uh, community building surrounding the revolution of higher consciousness. And I think it's time for me to start breaking those, breaking that barrier and maybe discussing a little bit about what I mean or like what I think surrounding consciousness. So in Stephen Greer's, in the Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, the way that it's set up is basically talking about how extraterrestrial and like higher life forms are actually, um, they, they exist in a different uh, landscape um, than we do. So, you know, aliens that are visiting us from another world aren't necessarily a uh, human level because they actually are able to interact with different um, dimensions and different uh, like, like ways of existing. So a good example from that movie that I think is going to will start the conversation is they were talking about this guy who astral projected. And while he was astral projecting, he was like flying above, I don't know what city and what country or whatever. I wasn't really paying that close of attention, but it was more about the story. Um, he was he was floating above in his astral body and he actually um, crashed into and moved one of these alien spacecraft that was like floating above the city. And Dr. Stephen Greer says that it's really interesting because it points to that, like, because when you're in your astral form, you, of course, you would, like, phase through the, the things that exist in, like, 3D on our world, but, um, because these, they they exist in, like, a different, in that, like, astral plasma 
matter way um, the, he when the guy was astral projecting he crashed into them and I think that's really cool I think that's really interesting you know um, so astral projection you know I guess we'll, we can like weave our way through there is a really accessible way of us as humans in the third dimension to be able to access um, some of that higher dimension other world interworldly um, states of existence. Um, there's a there's a show that just came out on Netflix called Behind Her Eyes, and if you've watched if you haven't watched it, spoiler alert, I'm giving you two seconds to pause it and walk away. Spoiler alert. Basically, the girl in the show is really good at astral projection and teaches someone else, and like basically they all start to astral project and part of what makes her like crazy in the show is that she astral projects to like watch her husband cheat on her because he doesn't understand that she's able to see those things um and I, is this kind this maybe this episode is going to be about astral projection no it's not i don't want to do that because i don't know that much about it and i don't have that many thoughts about it either but um basically i think so astral projection and in that show and with the guy who crashed into the alien spaceship, it brings us to a place where you can begin to see that humans have a high capacity to access these higher levels of consciousness. Because um, there's a lot of ways that we exist in consciousness. So first and foremost, born into your human 3D body, you exist in this plane. So that's a lot about like your emotions and your reactions and like like the the 3d dimensional material world so like eating and breathing um exercise things like that exist in the first level of consciousness and that's something that humans have that no other creature on this planet has so even higher intelligent beings like dolphins or pigs or whatever monkeys they don't have that same level of access to to be able to make conscious higher level decisions um, and so what I think is really neat is that we as humans, each of us, every single person, no matter who you are, you have the access to those higher levels of consciousness. Um, and I think it's part of everyone's journey to be able to ascend and transcend the first few levels of consciousness and be able to tap into and access what we know as like source energy where everything culminates so even like religion um and religious different religious and spiritual beliefs all essentially stem from that main source of higher level consciousness because we all are connected so something that i've really enjoyed was was getting to see it through, I mean, albeit it's through like an alternate lens, like aliens and extraterrestrial life forms or whatever. Um, but there's so many theories, like they talk about how aliens potentially are just humans from the future who have access to higher levels of consciousness and we just come back to, I don't know what, you know? Um, but something that Steven Greer says that I think is really cool is that they actually conduct these like, what, what a close encounter of the fifth kind is is that they're actually communicating with these higher life forms because they're going out into remote areas and they're getting together and they're meditating and they're practicing those like like energetic belief systems and through meditation and through group union uniting on like higher levels of thought like love and unity and peace which are higher vibrations they're actually able to communicate with these other beings and have these like transcendental experiences because they're they're like pushing past um, just like day to day human to human contact, you know. So when I think about consciousness, it's really it's it's about separating and distinguishing the different like aspects of your own astral cerebral self. So, like, the way I feel about something doesn't necessarily affect or even influence the way that my subconscious and my astral self feel about something. Because whilst we are still connected in the same way because we exist in this, like, Frank's body or this viewer who you are body, it, there's, there's more, you know, there's more to it. 
-hmm. it's um the questions always come up it's like okay where are we from why are we here what are we doing here Mm -hmm. and those questions are all answered through the revolution of higher consciousness Um, right now we live in a world and we're living in a very specific time very specific where the universe is going from living in this like earth energy based mindset of like material wealth to now evolving past that into something where everyone's supposed to be involved and everyone is supposed to come together and and bring about a new era of human existence and like world peace huh i'm sorry i'm just having a moment because i'm like damn but i have some water i think the what I think is really neat about that is that it's not exclusive. You know, there's you don't have to be an academic, you don't have to be intelligent in a world way to access these things. You know, I think that it's about wisdom and it's about perspective and the ways that I even tried to access it myself, it's like through meditation and spiritual practice and honoring myself and honoring the spirit that's connected within me that transcends me and goes out to everybody else. Um, This last album that I wrote, and even when I wrote Snake, that's really what those things, that's really what all those topics are surrounding, is that once I was able to step out of my body and begin to just exist outside of my body, yeah, there's a lot of people who are going to say that I'm crazy or I'm irrational or I don't know what I'm talking about or you know people are always going to have something to say but when you enter into that space of higher consciousness and when you begin to live in that place of higher consciousness being kind spreading love a spreading peace like accepting irrational behavior becomes second nature because you're no longer judging and you're no longer ridiculing but you're actually just able to accept and you actually begin to go through situations without losing your peace and losing your sense of identity because you realize that your identity is connected to everybody else's identity. Like we as humans aren't individuals. We're not, it's not me, Mary Sue and Sue Ann. It's me, Mary Sue, Sue Ann. You know, like we're all the same thing. In a level, in experience of higher consciousness, we're all the same. Um, and so I, I implore everyone to take those steps to dismantle their own feelings about stuff you know I think the only way to go through it is through it so you really have to do the work of unraveling and picking apart and deciding but in those decisions the closer you get to listening to yourself and the closer you get to expanding your ideas and your thought processes and the ways that you can begin to be objective about the first level of consciousness within yourself you actually begin to realize that you're not your thoughts you're not your emotions you're actually a part of something that's infinitely bigger than you because i like when i when i live in my world of frank's frank's world whatever i um i am not identified with the body of frank's i'm identified with the intentions and the 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 like like i'm the observer like i don't feel my emotions as much as as intensely as I used to because now I I recognize that there is a separation between my body's reaction to something and my astral existential reaction to something and I can begin to allow immediate infinite perspective to something and say this doesn't this is a moment of learning and this is a moment to grasp but it's just a moment it's just the present moment and through the present moment you access infinite levels of knowledge and higher consciousness because you can put away the reactions and your bodily feelings about something in order to allow for there to be a manifestation of peace and love within you for you for those surrounding you and for life to bring to go forward you know to 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 be more you know, I think we, we, so it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of things to say. And I think I'm kind of like on my soapbox about it. But I guess what I'll say to people is that 
moving forward um, into this revolution of higher consciousness, it's really important to put yourself away and to, but not put yourself away in a way that deletes who you are, but putting yourself on the same platform as everybody else surrounding you. So I spoke about this in like my spirituality video and it's essentially the same thing, which is that you, I recognize my own contribution. So my contribution is um, maybe talking about stuff or vocalizing things that people don't have words for maybe, you know, um, and I do that in every way possible. So in the way that I dress, you know, I try to dress just more authentic to who, to what feels right. And I try to write music and produce music that's gonna challenge a lot of traditional capitalist mindsets. So I think it's important that, but, but that being said, that's my contribution. That's my contribution to this pool of higher consciousness that we're all in. Everyone has a different contribution. Some people are born to help other people. Some people are born to lead. Some people are born to create and build and heal. And everyone has a different role to play. And no one's role is more important or less, or less important than anybody else's role because we're all playing in the same team and on the same game. And I would just implore everyone to remember that, that no one's in competition with anybody else. Community has been broken down over time for all of us because there's been so much competition and there are so many people saying so many things about everybody else when in reality, if I have said something nasty about someone, it shouldn't have been, oh, um, I don't like what this person's doing. It should have been the way that that person's doing something is, re is reflecting something within me. And I don't like that part about myself. So I just recommend, you know, everyone take the time, explore, don't be afraid. We all have the power, all of us. And it's connected together that we actually can begin to expand and really manifest the new world that we're supposed to be living in. Um, never in life have we, have humans ever had access the way we have access now. So the only thing left to do is to transcend the access and use it to our advantage and not be hindered by it. Because the world's gonna go. The world's moving on. Consciousness is happening. The revolution's happening. And you either choose to do your part to be a part of it, or you kind of get chosen for you. And especially Pisces season, that's really what this whole thing was about, was about choosing that path for yourself and not being scared. So I would recommend that everyone take the time, read some books, explore your own self, heal, you know, most importantly, heal, because you can't explore level higher levels of consciousness if you're tethered to past pains within the first and second dimensions of it. So today in What's in My Purse, um, again, I brought this, this guy with me. Uh, I love this little chrome purse and also it just... You know, I don't care if people think that I wear stuff super often or a lot. Like this dress, I made this for the Lear album cover and I'm gonna wear it again. Throw on a jean jacket and some sneakers and instantly it's like relaxed. Um, so same thing with the chrome purse. You know, I think this outfit, I really like how this is feeling. So nice and cool and like refreshing. So today in my purse, I actually brought one of my favorite books I actually brought one of my favorite books with me. It's Oneness, um, transcribed and received by Rasha. So Oneness is, whew, I just got goosebumps. Oneness, this book has completely changed my perspective on consciousness, on the unity between all people, and has really given me the tools and put me into a different headspace when it came to understanding how to begin to experience oneness daily in my own life. Um, there are a lot of books that will help. The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, another great read. 
um, the greatest salesman in the world, OG Mandino, um, even the alchemist, uh, what is that, Paul Coelho, um, I don't think I said that right, but those books and all of these books, it's, it's basic knowledge, it's right here, it's right here in front of you. You know, you don't have to go too far. You can go on Amazon and find these books. That's for Amazon. You can go to a bookstore and find these books. You can go to their website and buy them. And 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 these books, these books have, have shown me and brought me to knowledge that I necessarily didn't have the words for. And I think taking that first step of acknowledging that I recognize the potential within myself to experience higher consciousness but recognized also that I was being held back by smoking too much or thinking too much about what other people thought or drinking too much or exercising in excess or eating food in excess, things like that. Because I was living in like a hurt pain place, I didn't have the tools necessary to access my own level of higher consciousness. But once I broke those things away and healed and spent time with my family and got to know myself again, I was able to receive a book like this and really take it in and really, really, really say, wow, I didn't have the words for that or I felt crazy. I didn't know that other people thought the same thing or believed in the same things that I believed in. Um, so if I was going to make a recommendation as to how to begin to break through the barriers of your own consciousness and how to experience a higher level of existence within this planet, world, 3D dimension on Earth, I would say oneness, this is a great place to start. Read it a hundred thousand times, read it until you embody it, and it will literally change your life. Just like mine's been changed. So that's all I have to say about consciousness. That's how I want to begin this conversation. I'm probably going to have to revisit this over and over and over again. The more that I get deeper into the understanding and the more I learn, the more I want to continue to share of that knowledge. And I want everyone to just walk away from today's episode realizing that we're all part of the same game and that none of us are in competition with each other because everyone's actions support everyone else's actions like a web. Humans are our most effective, are most effective when we can think as one unit population is really important to humans. We're like ants, bees. We're reflected in nature. So reflect it back at yourself. Buy this book if you want it. Um, if you want to borrow it, hit me up. I actually will send it out and we can send it around Sisterhood of the Traveling Book. Um, I have a lot of other recommendations that I would gladly share with anybody. If you're interested, just let me know. And if anything I said today sparked anything in you that's going to go and try to unravel more and go a little deeper into who you are and the ways that you can exist in the world, by all means, that's all I'm here for. Thank you so much. See you next week. Bye.